So you bought the uh, original MakerBot and you started working with that. How did you get from there to actually building your own design and then deciding to uh, sell it? How did all well, that I take bought, place? I, I bought a Libre, or the, you know what a Libre is? No. The CAD pack. It's like the, the cheapest real CAD package you can buy. Mm -hmm. And so I bought that a while ago, uh, before I got my printer, quite a while before, and I started CADing up stuff and working on my, my designs for robot stuff. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got my cupcake, and it was... It was the cupcake wasn't really completely cooked when when they re, when they released <laughs> even even by the time I bought one of the, the close out cupcakes too so it's even its end of life uh -huh. it wasn't really it had the uh, the regular DC motor extruder and then you know, there was just just tons of issues with it and I finally printed out a stepper extruder for it like mm -hmm. like what a lot of them the rep wrap people have. A modification of that, the, mm -hmm. the main one of those, and then after just a lot of work, mm -hmm. uh, I finally started getting decent prints mm -hmm. with my cupcake, and mm -hmm. then I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, let's uh, let." Along the way, I was making little upgrades for the mm -hmm. cupcake, little mm -hmm. pieces for it, and so I was messing around in my CAD package mm -hmm. and learning it because I'm incredibly slow at CAD. Mm -hmm. incredibly incredibly slow and so I just it just turned from that into uh, um, making another printer so I could have so my brother could have one okay uh, and so then that you know if you if you look at if you look back at my YouTube videos they go back really far mm -hmm. and I have a couple a couple designs and I had a bigger printer that was that was intended to be a uh, a, a nice sturdy printer that had uh, milling capabilities mm. and you know maybe pick and place and some of the other you know mm. gee whiz cool features right uh, and uh, then the printer bot came out and then I was like you know what maybe I should have focused on my original uh, <laughs> thing with the smaller printers because I have a whole bunch of smaller printers mm -hmm. uh, not a whole bunch but several smaller printer designs that I did before my big one Mm -hmm. And the the printer bot, the success of that's like, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, maybe I should uh, step back for a minute, and then so I I uh, came up with the I made a little prototype. I did it I did it in paper first, but this was what the original. Uh, you know, I did this in H HDPE. Mm -hmm. It's like just cut out of cutting boards. Right. It was supposed to be this size. It ended up bigger than this in the mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. But this is what this is what drove the actual um, size and dimensions of the original printer, and then it kind of evolved from there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you decided to start a uh, Kickstarter and uh, get out yeah, there. Yeah, I went. I went. I went back and forth on that. Yes, I'm going to do it. No, I'm not going to do it. And mm -hmm. again, I'm I'm pretty open about stuff. Even when I look in my my uh, Google Plus history mm -hmm. of like talking about it and how right. I was going to do it and uh, I, I decided on doing it but it had to be under my rules yeah. not the uh, way Kickstarter works and right. um, at my own pace I, I saw what happened with with the printer bot and and just how much trouble it was for Brooke to scale up and I completely understand he was just swamped with success Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a big difference between delivering all of a sudden, you know, he ori his original campaign had 50 printers or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And it ended up being 1,500 or 1,800. I don't, I don't remember how many it is. Right. That's huge. Mm -hmm. And so he had lots of growing pains. And he, he, he ended up shipping. He's just barely right now delivering his printers. I mean, he's, the first ones just were delivered semi-recently. And I and I, I don't I didn't want to do that. I wanted to deliver the printers. I, I there's going to be a lead while I order the parts. Sure. Uh, and but it's not going to be the type of lead that uh, like the printer bot was. I'm going mm -hmm. to be delivering them as soon as I can get them out, mm -hmm. and I'm going to ship them off in small batches. Okay. Cool. What kind of problems did you run in? Well, you built several. 
you've gone through yeah. several generations. So mm -hmm. the the most difficult part of a pr of the printer is the extruder, mm -hmm. and that's it's like ninety percent of the printer. Mm -hmm. it, uh, once once you have a, a reliable extruder, you're you're in good shape. You'll see a, a lot of the uh, a lot of the DIY uh, printers are using the actual rep wrap mm -hmm. extruder designs, or they ha or they use a, a Maker Gear extruder. And mm -hmm. there's a reason behind it. It takes a lot of work to design your own, mm -hmm. and uh, I can't. I always have to design my own everything. <laughs> and so I have mine. Mine works. It mine works similar. It takes it, it. It's my little take on the extruder, and um, it works. It's a, quite a bit different than the the. You know, it, it has a combination set of gears. It uses a lot smaller motor, mm -hmm. and to keep the mass down, and yeah. it still uses the three millimeter filament, which is a lot cheaper. Okay. So I had a lot of weird constraints. Well, not it's getting less cheaper, but I I, I put more constraints on myself to make it more difficult. <laughs> okay, I'm so pretty you, happy with it. Yeah, great, great. No, the parts that you've been able to produce look great. I, I was surprised. Uh, a, a lot of that is that um, I, I I think there's a, a, a you're, you're going to start seeing the bar. It's just literally. Mm -hmm. It's like mo uh, most things in technology is, mm -hmm. you know, until somebody says this is what the new bar is, mm -hmm. you know, things don't meet up to that bar. Right. And a few a few months ago, the Ultimaker, I don't I don't know if you saw the the, the crazy high res Ultimaker prints. No. Um, people were, were going nuts over that. They're like, oh, look at look at the super high quality that people are getting now with the Ultimaker. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then that just set the bar, and mm -hmm. that's where the bar is now. And so, you know, I, when I'm developing my, my stuff, I go, okay, that's my bar. Mm -hmm. And so I just kept going until I met or, and I think in some ways, um, I'm ahead, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they, they actually rely on a little bit of, uh, 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 di different, di different way of building or they use speed a little bit differently than, than I do. Mm -hmm. Um, and thinner layer heights, um. I I'm more I'm more more in the classic way, um, at slower speeds. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I can't I can't go at the same speeds the old maker runs mm -hmm. at. Mm -hmm. uh, I just can't. It's just because the, it's my machine is much less rigid and it's and it's smaller. But it, it's still it's it, it it chunks along at a, a good speed. It can do the mechanics are probably good up to a hundred. And the extruder can probably do eighty or something. I don't know if those numbers mean anything to you, or anything. but but those are those are very respectable rep rep numbers. Okay. So. Okay. Cool. One of the things that impressed me at uh, iHeart Engineering when I visited there was uh, they showed me well they were doing board assembly. They do their own uh, circuit boards. They don't fab the circuit boards, but uh, they do all the layout and everything. And then they have the circuit board uh, fab in the U.S. And then they do all the component uh, insertion and uh, surface mount uh, right there uh, in the uh, iHeart Engineering uh, labs. But they always need little fixtures, like you've got a connector and you want to hold that into the circuit board. And uh, you're using uh, uh, temp staff that comes in and maybe they're not uh, really experienced with uh, board assembly. So what they do is they just rapidly uh, design a little fixture to hold the connector in the board, and then they print it out, and then they've got the fixture. And, 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 and just that ability to think and implement and actually have what you need was, uh, you know, very, very... I, I use them all the time for drilling jigs. Hmm. Uh, I will just... So the, uh, this printer has... Uh, it's a good way to show you this. <laughs> So it has its ch channel material. I don't mm -hmm. know if you'll be able to see. It's just yeah, basically see channel it. material in yeah. a lot of ways. And so the part will fit inside of it, but that disguises where the holes are. Right. So you can take a jig that fits on this side mm -hmm. and then can show you exactly where the holes are. And that's actually going to be part of my strategy for um, for uh, increasing my production capabilities is I'm going to make a bunch of jigs that I place all the, the pieces in 
and then I'm going to uh, spray paint or mark or whatever on, and mm -hmm. it basically will be the mask mm -hmm. for all the holes and things that I need to cut out. Instead of having to measure anything, right. I basically just have these things, and I spray paint it, and there's the answer. And in theory, if I can, if I can cut between the lines, uh -huh. then I drill the holes where they need to be, then they will be in the right place because mm -hmm. they were printed in the same printer wow. that the uh, parts were printed on. Okay. Okay. No, that's great. That's that's fantastic. Yeah, you don't have to wait. You don't have to design something and send it out and then wait to get the part back. Yeah. 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 So, do you see this evolving into a regular business for you? Uh, is this something that you want to? Uh, do you want to sell hundreds, of thousands of uh, uh, these well, printers? I already, I already have uh, 600 people on the wait list. <laughs> and I'm adding, it looks like I'm adding about 100 a day. Okay. Well, I hope I'm fairly high in that list. I, I don't know. I yeah. could go find you in the list. <laughs> um, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it from a uh, the perspective of what I have to do. The, you know, the list isn't necessarily people that have hand, are going to hand me money. Mm -hmm. It's people that have given me their email. So right, there's a big right. difference. Oh, sure, that. sure, sure. It's definitely lower, but I think it is, it's not going to be as, as, as bad as it usually would be, mm -hmm. where someone would hand you the email versus money, because I think for someone to sign up for my list, they are definitely, they were definitely disappointed that they weren't able to, um, to participate in the actual Kickstarter campaign. Right. That's a, that's a theory, at least. We'll see actually how it plays out, and and I'm glad that uh, I'm not holding on to a whole bunch of mo people's money for an unknown amount of time. Right. You know, how, right. while I ran up on production, and this this lets me really decide how I want to do things. Um, I after taking my printer apart and looking at it, you know, I have I can visualize in my head all the pieces, but until I had it sitting, the, the picture, the the update on my Kickstarter campaign. Mm -hmm. Where I had it all disassembled, uh, disassembled, laying out in front of me. Mm -hmm. um, it, it after seeing that, I became much more confident with uh, with even handling the six hundred numbers or whatever. And right. so, what I would like, what I would like to do is, I will do. I'm going to do all twenty five of the Kickstarter kits by myself, right in this room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to see how that goes and see all the issues that I have. Mm -hmm. And then from that point, I'm going to look because I'll have this this big long wait list of people that that do want a printer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to look into hiring somebody else, like either local uh, mm -hmm. manufacturing people or whatever, to make the like the nozzle, the nozzle like on my lathe right there. Yeah. See my lathe. Yeah. Whatever. No, that's my mill. My lathe. My lathe okay. right there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, but. You know, it takes me forever to do it, and if they have this mm -hmm. big fancy lathe, you know, out of, uh, CNC lathe, they can just hit a button and, and mm -hmm. magically mm -hmm. makes the part for me way better than I can make the part, and way faster. And it'll cost it. Uh, you know, my margin goes down, but mm -hmm. you know, I'd rather spend my time innovating and making progress mm -hmm. towards you know the next generation or whatever than spending right. all my effort towards you know cutting stuff <laughs> with a saw. <laughs> right, right. Hundred parts with the saw, so. Uh, right, yeah. There again with uh, iHeart Engineering, what they're doing is a lot of the uh, metal parts that they need. Uh, they've yeah. got a shop in, uh, I think it's in uh, Rochester, New York, and it's a retired guy that's got all this equipment in his uh, garage, and uh, he was a machinist for his whole life, and he loves doing this stuff, and he can do it as cheap, if not cheaper, than having the stuff uh, done in China or, uh, you know, other parts of the, the world, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, I, I definitely want to, uh, to uh, not be cutting <laughs> stuff. Like, <laughs> like, I want, I need to be part of the process for the initial stuff right. so that I know what is going on. Mm -hmm. um, and especially if I'm, if, if I want to do another printer after this one where, you know, I could do another Kickstarter campaign, and the next one I could sit there and go, you know what, I know what the production capabilities are mm -hmm. this time. Mm -hmm. So this time right. I'm going to have it unlimited and and state my production velocity, and people can make up their own mind if they want to hand me the money sure. or not. Sure. And then it's it's a much more predictable, you know, I, I'm, I, you know I, I'm 
the the date I put on this printer for the Kickstarter campaign is like the end of July. Right. Um, okay. No coincidence that that my campaign started on May first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So because the way Kickstarter works is you know you have your campaign and then you have the the you know your month and then July July really means the end of July right. technically. But I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try and start delivering having kits ready to deliver before I get any of the money from Kickstarter. So mm -hmm. Kickstarter campaign ends at the end of the month, and then it's like two weeks before um, uh, Amazon decides to get around to paying me. Right. And but I should have some I should have some kits already ready to go well before uh, the day I promised. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing I want to talk about next time is uh, you're, you mentioned uh, putting together like a program where uh, people would do the 3D printer and then they would uh, produce uh, robot parts and then produce a, a actual practical uh, robot. And I thought that was yeah. really, really fascinating. Yeah, I, I, have, I, I, want, I, want, I want people to be able to, to learn all the aspects of robotics. Yeah. From you know, I'm learning it as well. You know, mm -hmm. part of it is you, know, you need to know so much stuff. You need to know the mechanics. You need to know mm -hmm. now you, the CAD aspect of it. You need to know the microcontroller aspect mm -hmm. of it. You need to know the programming aspect of it. Right. And there's just that's I think that's why robotics is so great actually. It's right. Because you have to be an expert in so many things. Exactly. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. I, I wish we could talk longer, but uh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I, I've got to get to a client site. I've got to get it cleaned up and get out of here. Okay. All right. Well, sorry for the delay there. Oh, no, no, no. No problem. No problem at all. Okay. We'll talk to you later. All right. Sure. Anytime. Okay. Thanks. Bye.